Hello, welcome to Todd Miller TV. I'm here today with Juana, and I've got two things we're going to talk about. So I'll show them really quick, okay? So there's two charts. Um, this chart over here is home price, uh, number of single family homes sold. And then this one over here is the actual appreciation of those homes. So I'm, what I'm going to do is turn these back around so we can look at them. But if you go on the video blog and you look down, I'll have these posted so you can kind of follow along with them. So first we're going to talk about is the one um, single family home sold. It's this one right here. So every place you see dark purple is where the most sales were. Right. And then every place you see white is where there were least sales. So why in some areas are there more sales than others? Well, clearly, uh, buyers are more interested in buying in those areas. It's not that there are more homes listed in those areas, but really, it's that more buyers are find those areas appealing and they want to purchase in those areas. And when you look at this map, you know the uh, the the usual suspects show up, which is, for example, eight nine zero five two, which is the Anthem area in Henderson. That's been for a very long time a very desirable area for buyers to, to purchase. It's also been for a very long time a very expensive area relatively to the rest of the city as far as uh, as home prices. That area really did not get hit as hard as other areas of town when when we had the downturn. Okay. Uh, and, but it has enjoyed a lot of appreciation over the last year. It, it's enjoyed over 20% appreciation. Uh, which is significant in a year. So if you bought the home a year ago, it's worth twenty about 20-21% more uh, across the board uh, now than it was a year ago. So congratulations, uh, you did well, <laughs> okay? Uh, and, and other parts of the city enjoyed the same kind of appreciation, uh, obviously some less uh, and, and some uh, about, about the same. Uh, the thing about all this is that this is all historical data, you guys. Right. Um, this is all historical. So all of the statistics that we see out there, uh, you're going to see statistics anywhere from 10% oh, appreciation here to 20% to as much as 27% depending on which data source you're looking at. And then that depends on what exactly they're looking at. I used to have a friend in college who used to say there are liars, there are damn liars, and there are statisticians. So yeah. you can make statistics say whatever you want them to say. But even without statistics, if you're out there looking for a home, you know home prices are increasing because you see that when you're trying to purchase a home and homes are selling over list price and you're looking at something that sold maybe a month or two ago and it sold for less than what the home you know, next door just sold for today. So even without the, when the, all these wonderful charts and articles, we know just by looking out at the marketplace that home prices are increasing. Okay, so... Um... So what people are going to want to know, because there are people watching this video who are going to say, well, what's going to happen in the next year? Because naturally, I mean, if home prices are going up now, it's a bubble and they're just going to fall again because home prices can't go up 20%. So what is this, like today what's happening and what do you see happening in a year? Okay, so I'm going to get my crystal ball out. I'm going to rub my crystal ball. Okay. <laughs> Look. Um, inventory is not going to go up dramatically over the next year. There's no reason for us to believe that it will. Okay. So with inventory remaining scarce, then logic tells us that uh, bio demand will remain uh, consistent. So that means that values will continue to increase. That's just logically. What about the shadow inventory and all these houses that are either vacant or the banks, you know, has is going to start foreclosing on them now and, you know, there's there's... They still say there's a million houses in the U.S. So what's going to happen to those? Okay, Crystal Ball again. No, right. just kidding. Okay. Uh, you know, not a whole lot. I mean, we've had um, pretty steady inventory, I would say, over the last couple of years. Okay. And that has really worked out well for... Uh, for the banks who have this inventory. They have no reason to dump on the market. They've learned their lesson in the past. When they dump on the market, home prices plummet. They certainly don't want to do that. Right. Uh, remember, home prices have increased in Vegas about 20, 20, 27%. That means that when they bring their properties to market, they're getting 20 to 27% more now than they would have a year, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So the longer they can make this thing drag out, the more of their money they're going to recoup. And they are not cash poor. They have no incentive to bring properties to market to get cash because they're not cash poor. Interest rates are at, at an all-time low. They can borrow money all day long from the Fed and loan it out for and make a profit. There's no reason for anybody to dump properties on the market. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that, that strategically, 
why would you destroy your ability to make money over here by trying to capture, you know, take back these houses now, mm -hmm. hurt the market, and then hurt, you know, because if the market falls again in Vegas, I, investors are just going to flood back in. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's what's going to happen. I mean, that, that's why investors are here. Investors are here because prices got so low. And I'm going to do a whole another video on this chart right here because we're down here. Okay, prices got so low, investors flooded in, and that's why the average person can't buy a house that's qualified because all these investors have cash. Right. So well, remember, the other reason why the banks don't want to flood the market is because with home prices increasing, those people that are still upside down, this is giving them a lot of hope. So they're not going to walk away from yeah. their homes. So this will also reduce foreclosures. It'll reduce short sales. It really stabilized the market in a good way that's good for everybody. And I know the buyers out there are frustrated, but buyers, listen to me. This is good for you because that means that when you do finally buy that house, you're not going to be in a position where uh, the market's going to tank and you're going to be upside down in the house. That's very unlikely. It means that when you do finally buy that house, you will see appreciation. You will get to realize the American dream, which is to see your home value increase. So this is actually good for you. Good. Awesome. So I thought I'd share that with you. These charts are on the website. You have to go on the blog if you're watching this on YouTube and um, you'll be able to find those. Um, that's my update for today and hope to see you on another video. Thanks.